I guess it's still morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Thank you all for being here with us today. We are so excited for this very exciting day, and we get to welcome back uh, our Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist, and we're delighted to have you back. Uh, Lieutenant Governor, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Thank you, and thanks for all you do for our state. Uh, today we have uh, some other guests that you're gonna hear from. Uh, we have Sarah Serpicki from uh, the um, 60 by 30 office. She is the director, and that is at the Michigan Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity. We also have with us, and we're delighted to have Eula Gaddis. He is the rector, director of quality at Gyra Metal Products in Zealand, a great partner, and we're glad that he's here with us. You'll hear from him. We also have uh, Nate uh, Henschel from our Chamber of Commerce, and you'll hear from him also. And then you're gonna hear from a delightful young woman who we are so proud of here at GRCC, and she is our student who uh, has taken advantage of the Michigan Reconnect program, and uh, this program has changed her life. And you're gonna hear a great story from her about her journey, Morgan Brink. So before I turn it over to uh, others to come up to the podium, I just want to express our incredible um, excitement and energy that we feel around this program of Michigan Reconnect and also the Futures for Frontliners program, which we have both here at GRCC. And they have been tremendously successful and we are so proud of our students who have taken advantage of this. The program uh, has created a fantastic opportunity for so many of our residents right here in uh, our county, and especially for those students who are uh, 25 and older. Um, they can start and restart their education, which is the great thing about this program, covering costs of tuition and district tuition for these students really puts a life-changing education within reach for them, and that's so important for our state. Uh, the additional uh, state investment that you're gonna hear about today will uh, continue to increase these opportunities for our residents uh, so that they can attend and be successful right here at GRCC and at other schools. Right here at GRCC, I can tell you that last year, 22% of our students we're taking advantage of uh, both the Michigan Reconnect program and the Futures for Frontliners program. And the number of uh, students uh, age 30 and over was up 14%, and that's from pre-pandemic levels. And we believe that the state funds uh, certainly played a significant role in uh, this increase. And so we're so happy about that. In the upcoming semester, as we look at our numbers before we open, we have about 1,100 reconnectors and over 1,000 future, uh, Futures for Frontliners students that will be taking classes here. And 80% of those students are between the ages of 25 and 39 years of age. That's fantastic. We need them in the workforce. So we're so proud of our student who's gonna to speak to you today, Morgan Brink. <clears throat> She's a married mother, of, has two children, and she came back to college at the age of 32 when uh, she realized that college was the path to a more secure future for her family. And Morgan has a great story to tell us about and how her decision has really changed her life and it's made a big difference. And it's delightful that her husband and her two kids are here with us today. You'll hear from her in just a few minutes. Uh, you'll also hear, uh, which is very important for us to involve our partners, you're gonna hear from uh, Eula Gaddis, who can tell us about the value of a community college education as we all work to build a skilled workforce here in West Michigan. GRCC works really closely and we have forever with our employer partners, and uh, we wanna make sure that we are connecting students with high demand skills in uh, evolving and growing fields right here in West Michigan. And that is the future of our communities, that training and retraining, and especially in these uh, high demand skill areas. 
So without further ado, it is my great pleasure to welcome to the podium Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist. Lieutenant Governor. All right, how's everyone doing today? Good, I am absolutely thrilled to be here, uh, back here at Grand Rapids Community College. It's such an important institution here, not just in the city and the county, but frankly, one of the anchors um, of the state for the services you provide, the educational experiences that everyone who comes into contact uh, with this institution is able to benefit from. So, so President Alavarez, thank you uh, so much for your leadership and your entire team. We're proud to, that you're uh, launching your tenure here in this role, and we are excited to continue to support you, Governor Gretchen Whitmer and I, as we are so uh, proud of the support we've been able to offer to our uh, community colleges across the state of Michigan. These institutions really do create pathways to opportunity. And that is what we are here uh, certainly to celebrate today. I also want to acknowledge um, um, Sarah Zerpicki from our team, the Department of Labor and Economic Opportunity. One of the first things that Governor Gretchen Whitmer announced in her first State of the State Address in 2019 was the adoption of a goal called 60 by 30. And the 60 by 30 goal means that we set a goal for 60% of Michigan adults to have a degree, a professional training and certification, or some other credential uh, by the year 2030. And since then, uh, we have worked in partnership with the Michigan legislature to now fully fund for the second year the Michigan Reconnect program, which as the president referred to, provides a tuition-free pathway to community college or professional training and certification for all Michigan adults. We also have funded the Futures for Frontliners program, which is a tuition-free pathway for higher education as well. But that one is targeted toward the people who were you know, going to work every day and putting themselves in risk and harm's way during the pandemic as a way to say thank you for those folks who were working on the front lines, whether you were working as a healthcare worker or a grocery store professional or a bus driver or a truck driver or a sanitation worker or a utility worker, the people who were basically doing their jobs so people could continue to live their lives and live safely. And so it's really uh, exciting to know that uh, more than 2,000 students will be participating in those programs here through GRCC. I also am I'm really proud to have our other partners here, uh, Nate from the Chamber, uh, Eula from Jaira, we also have representatives from our legislature office. We think we have representative from uh, Representative David LeGrand's office here um, with us today. Um, but really, we're here to celebrate Morgan. And uh, I'm so proud to have been able to meet you and your family and to hear your story. Uh, that is what this is really all about. We know that post high school, post secondary educational experiences and training are critical to not only the future of the individuals who experience them, but they are critical to the future of Michigan communities and our economy. They open the door to high skilled, well paying jobs, better jobs for more Michigan people and therefore better economic opportunities available to more Michigan families. Now all of us know how talented people in Michigan are. But the importance of being able to have the credentials that can communicate that talent are really what's, what will make the difference for people to connect that talent to the kinds of jobs and companies that they want to either start or participate in. So that is why the 60 by 30 goal has been an anchor of our administration's economic opportunity creation efforts. And so we're really excited about the fact that, you know, 100,000 Michiganders, that's more than 100,000 people in our state, have joined the ReConnect program. And approximately 18,000 of them have returned to school or enrolled for the first time. And I want to, I want to really reiterate that specifically. Um, this program is about helping people maybe complete educations that they may have previously started. Life happens, and sometimes people are not able to finish their educational experiences. And that is why this year, as part of the budget that the governor signed last month, we included additional support for students that are going through the Michigan Reconnect and Futures for Frontliners programs. These wraparound services to the level of $6 million worth of funding will help people have what they need to be able to actually finish. 
Maybe you need a little bit of help with your childcare expenses. Maybe you need a little bit of help with transportation services, or maybe you just had a breakdown and need a little bit of help to, to fix a tire, although we're doing something about that because we're fixing all these roads and they're gonna be smooth, <laughs> there'll be no more potholes and the stuff that we fix will be fantastic. But you may need a little bit of help to get through, money to buy the books that you need for these classes. Whatever it might be, these wraparound services are about completion, are about finishing what you start so that you can be one, proud that you were able to get all the way through it, but now that you have the credential in hand, you can leverage it for the economic opportunity and the doors that it opens. We want people to be finishers in Michigan. And so we know that these um, wraparound services dollars will help people do that and increase that completion rate. Now, I know we set a goal of 60% of Michiganders you know, reaching this credential threshold. Now, when we announced that, we were at 45%. So we had, a, we had a pretty big gap to fill in 10 years. Well, we are now only just into the second year of fully funding the Michigan Reconnect program, and we've already moved to 49%, four percentage points in basically a year and a half. What that says is that we have the momentum to blow past this goal. And the higher we get with this proportion of Michiganders having these credentials and degrees, the better it will be for our state, the better it will be for businesses like Jira that are looking for hungry, ambitious, talented, credentialed professionals to join their team in a wide array of roles. This is about creating economic opportunity and possibility so that not only students like Morgan, but more importantly, the family members they enable, her daughter Thea, her son Bo, that they can see their parents and people in their lives pursuing a dream, completing a task, and moving forward and creating opportunity for them. We're gonna keep working hard, Governor Gretchen Whitmer and I, and we will work with any and everyone to get these things done, to have Morgan's back and students like hers, to make sure that every potential partner becomes an actual partner, deploying the resources and relationships and tools that they have to create a pathway to success for more people and more communities in the state of Michigan, because that is our job to create the conditions for Michigan to be the state where it is the best place to have an idea, the best place to have ambition, and the best place for those to be married together so that opportunity can thrive in every place and in every corner and in every community that people call home in the great state of Michigan. So it's an honor and a privilege to be here uh, to, to, to really just say thank you to everyone who has stepped up to be a part of this, including students like Morgan. So we really appreciate you. And with that, I'd like to bring up now Sarah Serpicki, the director of our 60 by 30 office, to tell you a little bit more of the details about the program and the funding that we've announced. I'm fired up. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. Um, we, we deeply appreciate the leadership that you and um, Governor Whitner, Whitmer have shown in prioritizing the growth of our state's talent pipeline to help so many more Michigan families um, and businesses succeed. Um, thank you to Dr. Alvarez um, for your partnership and all the great work that you're doing at Grand Rapids Community College uh, to educate and support the ambitious and as the Lieutenant Governor said, we know they're talented already, right? So the ambitious and talented people who we hope will leave their time here ready for good paying jobs at, that are personally fulfilling um, and that will provide for their families for years to come. Um, the work you do here at GRCC and the work that's being done um, at our community and tribal colleges around the state um, will not only ensure a better future for our graduates, um, but also for their families and their communities, and will keep Michigan growing. Uh, you and the state's community and tribal colleges have been just tremendous partners in this effort. Thank you. So programs like Reconnect and Futures for Frontliners offer a path for so many um, Michiganders who are hoping to begin or to complete their educational journeys. Um, education expands opportunity for all Michiganders and makes our state an even better place to call home. As a state, it's right that we're focused on this mission of helping people not just to survive, but to prosper. And that's what education provides, is a path to prosperity. 
Uh, at the same time, growing the educational attainment of Michiganders also helps us create a larger and more skilled employee pool. The talent that's needed to fuel the success of today's Michigan businesses um, and the businesses that we need to attract for tomorrow. The great news is that because of the bipartisan investments um, like those in ReConnect and because of the additional supports like these barrier removal grants that we're putting in place, um, Michigan's adults without a degree are answering the call. They're showing up. Um, they are responding to the opportunity that we're creating. And if we continue to support them in these ways, I know they will continue to show up and we will be on track to achieve our goal of 60 by 30. Uh, as a state, we're obviously focused on the economic benefits um, of education to individuals, to families, their communities, and to the state. But um, what we often hear from ReConnect students um, is that they, they feel a benefit that goes well beyond sort of the economic, right? They feel pride, they feel hopeful, uh, they feel confident, and their families feel proud of them. Uh, I believe those rewards, while harder to measure, uh, will continue to benefit these students throughout their lives. That said, the economy is changing, and today talent is the key driver of economic growth. More and more, good paying jobs require higher levels of education uh, and training. We know that Michiganders are full of talent, and we need to make sure they have the educational credentials that they need in order to succeed. We don't want to see any Michiganders locked out of the opportunity that education creates. That means continuing to find innovative solutions to remove the barriers that prevent working age adults from succeeding in their educational and career pursuits. In other words, it's not just about increasing access to educational opportunity, but about investing in student success. Leo's new wraparound grant program um, is one of those solutions. We encourage Michigan ReConnect and Futures for Frontliners scholarship students to reach out to their colleges to learn more about how they can take advantage of those funds. For anyone participating in or thinking about taking advantage of Michigan ReConnect, we want you to know that you're not in this alone. We have invested in a strong network of people and resources to help you succeed. Our 10 navigators around the state are available to support you at every step along the path. Um, you will hear from them within about a week of completing your ReConnect application, and completing that application is literally the only step you have to take on your own. Our new wraparound grants can help ReConnectors to cover other financial emergencies like an unexpected car repair bill or child care costs. Uh, so I do want to encourage anyone 25 or older looking to make their dreams and bigger paychecks um, possible to apply for Michigan ReConnect today. Um, here to tell us a little more about her ReConnect success story at Grand Rapids Community College is Morgan Brink. Um, congratulations, Morgan, on saying yes to this opportunity, and we're honored to hear your story today. Thank you. Come on up. Thank you. My name is Morgan Brink, and I am a ReConnect student at GRCC. I have to admit that school was never really my thing when I was younger. Um, but today, thanks to the ReConnect program, school is my thing. I'm taking honors classes here at Grand Rapids Community College, and I'm actually on the dean's list. I've been on the dean's list every semester that I've been enrolled. <laughs> so how did this happen? It started after my husband and I lost our jobs doing, during the pandemic. Our circumstances forced me to take a hard look at how I could better my own life and to explore new opportunities to help support my family. Like a lot of people, I had to reinvent myself. I didn't really think college was an option because of the cost. And as a mom, you don't really want to take resources away from your kids or put a financial burden on your family. I heard about the ReConnect program on the news one day and I decided to push myself and go back to school. All of my classes so far have been online, and by the end of this fall semester, I will have completed 60 credits completely online. The ReConnect program is changing my life, and it's changing the way my kids see things, too. My kids watch everything that I do, from hours of studying to going with me to the bookstore. They are here with me now, and they will be there this spring when I walk at commencement. Thanks to the Michigan ReConnect program, I am on track to graduate with an associate degree in marketing, but I'm not stopping there. 
I am planning on completing my bachelor's degree through the three plus one program through Davenport. Thank you. I will now hand the microphone over to Nate to talk about how programs like Michigan Reconnect and Futures for Frontliners help boost the local economy and provide the fuel for future economic development. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you, Morgan. Uh, my name is Nate Henschel, and I have the pleasure of serving as the Director of Government Affairs for the Grand Rapids Chamber. Uh, competing for the best and brightest employees is a top issue for our members, uh, and we're committed to helping build a talent pool of local workers for the high paying and high tech jobs that drive our region, and it's imperative for economic growth and sustainability. The educational opportunities provided by Michigan Reconnect and Futures for Frontliner programs play a vital role in building that talent pool. The Grand Rapids Chamber serves as the voice of West Michigan business. We're focused on creating a community where people want to live, work, and stay. Creating a thrive, thriving and prosperous West Michigan for all requires collaboration and partnerships. The Chamber is committed to bringing partners together to support job growth opportunities. That is why it is so gratifying to be here today to hear about the expansion of Michigan Reconnect, continued opportunities for Futures for Frontliners, and the ongoing partnership among all the stakeholders, including the wonderful Grand Rapids Community College, LEO, and the Office of 60 by 30. It is, a, it is great to see the teamwork with everyone working so hard to clear barriers to higher education for adult learners like Morgan and the more than nearly 3,000 Reconnect eligible students accepted by GRCC in just the last year. I can tell you that this effort will pay dividends for the Grand Rapids region. One of the important considerations companies make when deciding to relocate or stay in a community is the talent pool. Studies show, and our experience confirms, that the reliability and adaptability of the talent pool is a key factor in keeping existing jobs in the community and attracting new companies to the region. The talent pipeline is strong in, in the greater Grand Rapids region. Our goal with this partnership is to make it even stronger. We need to promote programs like Michigan Reconnect and Futures for Frontliners and the many opportunities to be found at Grand Rapids Community College. We know there are so many more eligible working adults in Kent County who could take part of this tuition-free Reconnect program and we encourage each and every one of you to apply. We need to get the word out and we appreciate you being here today. It'll make our job at the Chamber a lot easier, and we need more students like Morgan who want to stay here, find a high-paying job, raise her family here, and give back to the community. Morgan is the present and the future. We know Morgan and other reconnectors are the key to continued economic vibrancy in the greater Grand Rapids region. With that, let's hear from Eula Gaddis from uh, Granville-based Gyra uh, Metal Products to hear about how manufacturers need community colleges and programs like Michigan Reconnect to upskill their workforce. Thank you, Nate. I also want to say congratulations again to Morgan and her family for uh, what is taking place in your lives. I want to share today that um, Gyra, Gyra Metal Products and other Michigan manufacturers, right now we're being challenged, if you will, uh, with increasing automation and technology. Uh, in this uh, particular time in which we're living, Industry 4.0 continues to revolutionize uh, how companies actually manufacture and distribute their products. If Michigan's workforce is going to compete, not just locally, but at a global level, not only now, but also in the future, the state's reconnect program, it has to help us to upskill with workforce. It's critical. At Gyra Metal, we are committed, 100% committed uh, to developing skills with our team members. In fact, we have seven folks who work for Gyra, who have worked in the past, who have gone through uh, the programs here at GRCC, the apprenticeship programs. We also have uh, three current students uh, enrolled in the program. And then we have one other potential student uh, that I've been trying to encourage to also be a part of the program. Uh, it's, it's very uh, critical, it's, it's important that, that we understand that we collaboratively work in this community to 
enrich the lives not only of families and individuals, but our community. And so investing in those team members is extremely important because an investment in that team member is an investment in that family, it's an investment into our community, but it's also an investment globally because our Michigan manufacturers need to compete at a global level. And so therefore, uh, when we think about this, uh, there is a more global impact to what's taking place with the 60 by 30. Uh, it's essential, again, in today's market that organizations have skilled and talented workers. Uh, the workforce that has to be equipped to understand new technology, uh, workforce that has to understand how to use those new tools. Uh, it was about 35 years ago, and I'm kind of telling on myself, that I actually walked these halls. Uh, 35 years ago, a uh, young guy who worked for a Michigan manufacturer, uh, I had started school and uh, things just weren't going well. Quit school and then ended up working for a Michigan manufacturer who said, how about going back to school for quality? And I enrolled in the quality science program here at GRCC. In fact, uh, I took one of the classes for a coordinate measurement machine uh, down the halls here. So I know firsthand what it's, uh, the impact in, that it can have in a life. And so now here it is as a director of quality. I, I owe a lot to Grand Rapids Community College and for the programs here. And so again, I, I congratulate you again on the work that you're doing and the bright future that will uh, come as a result of that. I would also say this in, in closing that as a past consultant, one of the things that I would always say to my clients is I'm vested in West Michigan. I'm vested in Michigan because this is where my family is at. These are where my children are being raised and they need organizations and businesses that are on the way up, that are profitable, uh, that they can be gainfully employed. And so again, thank you so much for all that is being done. I uh, appreciate the staff here and the work that's being done here. Thank you again for your time. So I wanna thank everybody who uh, came to be with us here today to celebrate some of these really major milestones as we grow our talent pipeline in Michigan. Um, fully funding Reconnect Again so that we can keep growing that program. Six million dollars in wraparound supports that are available for um, our students who are enrolled in Reconnect and Futures for Frontliners. And over 100,000 people have now said, yes, they wanna sign up, they wanna join Reconnect. Um, so we, we want to keep highlighting, celebrating, and spreading the word. This program, it, it's going. Like, join us. Um, and so we want to, again, thank you all for being here today. Thank you to GRCC for being our host. Thank you to all the speakers. And um, we now have time for questions, if you'd like. Yes, I have Yeah, thanks. Hi, my name is Melissa. I'm a reporter of Them Live. Um, I'm just curious, can you talk a little bit about how the state identified the need for this additional $6 million in wraparound service grants? Um, have you heard from students saying that, you know, these are the challenges that I'm facing in trying to complete my degree? Um, and then secondly, can you talk a little bit more about what are some of the barriers that you hear from students that they face when they're trying to complete? Sure. So, um, there's, a, there's a whole body of work on sort of what what makes it hard for adults to continue, right? And so, um, yes, we are already meeting their costs of tuition with the, with the grants, but the things that then set people off track are sort of unexpected expenses, emergency expenses, um, things that just they didn't quite plan for. And so, um, you know, we want to, again, as we said, make sure that this is not just an access program, but an actual success program. So we have great, the great relationships with the community colleges. They're the one, they are working every day to support students like those in Reconnect and Futures. We're able to collect a lot of input from them to understand sort of what are the barriers that students are facing. Um, and, and that informed the sort of design of this, um, this program. I will say that it's written to be, um, or the program is designed to be 
pretty flexible for the community colleges. So Leo disperses the money to the community colleges in order for them to make the grants to students. Um, and that allows them to be sort of the most responsive to student needs. Um, there aren't um, sort of, you know, really um, cumbersome sort of um, requirements around what students are allowed to use the money for. So the community college will administer that along with programs that or in line with programs that they've already developed to respond to student em emergency needs. Could you also talk a little yeah. bit more about uh, how students what makes a student eligible for this funding, and then um, will it vary by college in terms of like what they can use this funding for, and how will that be de determined? Sure. So the the community and tribal colleges um, have um, some of their own discretion about how they're going to determine eligibility. As far as the state is concerned, eligibility is just that they're enrolled in their at least their second semester of Reconnect or Futures for Frontliners. Did that answer? Mm -hmm. okay. Go ahead. I just have a quick follow-up to Melissa's question. Um, is there like a timeline of when these funds will be available, the additional uh, funding that you were just talking about? Yeah, we're trying to, um, we're finalizing right now all of the agreements um, sort of between the state and the community colleges and with the hope that they're available in early fall. Mm -hmm. okay. Hi, I'm uh, Joseph Poulos with the Collegiate. I actually am a Future for Frontliners recipient too. So yeah, super thankful Welcome. for that. Thank yes. you. Um, I was wondering, the funds that were made available for people to go back to school, is this uh, maybe like a first step in trying to make community college free for everyone to go somewhere down the line? Uh, I don't have that power. Uh, um, uh, and I think that is an ongoing discussion. <laughs> Good, thank you. Okay. Um, First of all, thanks for being a future for our line of student. Um, it's really important. And I mean, look, from our perspective, we're about breaking down barriers to opportunity. And we recognize the importance of a credential or a degree in allowing people to have full access to an economic future. And college affordability has been something that's been an anchor priority for our administration. Um, so by making community college tuition free for adults in Michigan over the age of 25 or for uh, people in Michigan who are working and eligible in jobs that run the front lines, future frontliners. We think that's a giant leap toward um, making this free, uh, or at least tuition free for everyone. And the wraparound services again are, are again making, while tuition costs, that's not the only cost that you encumber when pursuing your education. And but yeah, we want to get to a place where money is not a barrier to education. That's where we're trying to go. And then even in, the, in our budget that we signed earlier this year, for example, we, we had support for um, improving and strengthening student loan reimbursement programs for people who are pursuing certain uh, mental behavioral health professions, uh, knowing that we have a deeper need for that, certain types of education professionals and teaching experiences because we have a need for more education professionals and teachers. So we're gonna be really aggressive and continue to look for opportunities to remove money as a barrier to people to be able to play their fullest and best role um, in our economy going forward. James Harold, I'm also with the collegiate. What is, if you are reelected with Gretchen Whitmer, what is your plan to help GRCC students in the future with the Reconnect program? Well, one is to continue to fund it. Um, in the case of course, this has been fully funded now, it's the second budget year. We intend to uh, can, can carry that forward and hopefully with a uh, you know, we get the, the right kind of legislature, we can even talk about what it looks like to uh, deepen our support, or we'll have a year under our belt of the experience of these wraparound services and how uh, GRCC and the other community tribal colleges administer them. So the learnings from that can maybe lead to improvements in that program as well about what those grants look like, how much they are, what the requirements may be and the parameters around them. So uh, certainly our commitment is to making it so that everyone in Michigan who wants to pursue higher education has a path to do so. And so certainly everyone in the service area of Grand Rapids Community College, we want them to know that this door is open for them. I'm sure President Alvarez um, is gonna be also very aggressive in that regard to make sure um, that folks here in this community are able to take fully advantage of, of all the amazing things this educational institution has to offer.
Thank you, everybody.